All right, welcome to chapter eight, section one. Um, what we're going to be doing is we're going to take a concept we've learned throughout the year, which is uh, all about chemical reactions, and we're going to go ahead and um, figure out how to write them out, represent them, balance them, and decide exactly what type they are. Now, just as a quick review, um, here are some signs of a, a chemical reaction. As you guys know, it's all about an energy change. And what do we typically see? We see heat, or we feel heat, see light. You get a sound, like for example, if you look down there, you're definitely going to uh, hear that. You're also going to feel the heat, and you can see the light. Uh, another thing that occurs when there's an energy change is uh, electrical energy. And right here, we've got a very simple form of a battery. And since you guys are all packing cell phones, you know all about batteries and the fact that you can recharge them. Uh, but a, a battery is just a chemical reaction where electrons are being transferred, and so it's all part of it. Uh, as far as a new substance, again, with our four signs of a chemical reaction there, we've got formation of a gas, formation of a precipitate, color change, and then also smell, which typically is associated with a gas. So what we want to do, now that we know all the signs, and we've reviewed this many times throughout the year, we want to look at how can we could represent one of these chemical reactions that's taken place. And so when we write an equation, and let me write one, just a very simple one here. Here's hydrogen. We're going to combine it with some oxygen. And we're going to yield, or we're going to make some water. All right? Now, when we write out an equation, there's a number of things that have to happen. If you look right up here, um, this one right here, you've got to represent the chemicals involved. Well, we've done that. We've got hydrogen and oxygen and water. The equation must contain correct formulas of reactants and products. All right. Well, the, the formula for water is H2O. The formula for oxygen is O2. And the formula for hydrogen is H2. And this is super important, and if you guys remember, the clone fiber ha huh, are seven diatomic elements. Whenever we represent those seven right there, we've got to put them as uh, uh, two. Kind of like when you go get some Twinkies, right? You get a pair. So that's got to uh, that's got to happen. Then this next one, the law of conservation of mass, must be satisfied. And what that means is that means you have to have the same number of atoms on both sides of your reaction which right now you can see that we don't. For example, we have two oxygens right here, but we only have one over here, right? So the this equation has to be balanced, and, and what we mean by that is we just write out what's going to happen in a more real-life situation because the law of conservation of mass is very true. So I put a two here and a two here. Now how we do this is not important yet. We're going to worry about it later, but I've got four hydrogen atoms right there, I've got four hydrogen atoms right there. I've got two hydrogen or oxygen atoms right there, and two waters give me two oxygen. So that thing is balanced. So the law of conservation of mass is satisfied right there. The next thing is if we do have a coefficient, that's what this number is right here in front, it's a whole number that appears in front of a formula. That is what we're going to be using to balance equations when we do that uh, in the next section. And then last but not least, we want to list the states of matter. Now in this situation, what I had is hydrogen was in the form of a gas, oxygen was in the form of a gas, and we made some water vapor. And for those of you that saw the demo, the bottomless jug, and it is online if you want to see it, this is the exact reaction that uh, took place. So what we need to do is look at this table right here, table 2, and make sure that we understand what's going on on this page. So here it is. Here's that table. So when we l write out an equation, we've got to list the, the states of matter, solid, liquid, and gas. And there they are right there, and you're very used to those. Okay, A new one, though, for us is this thing called uh, aqueous. And all that means is dissolved in water. Very few things are going to be liquid, at least in this situation where we write out equations. Liquid would be like water or maybe something like uh, rubbing alcohol or gasoline. But most of the time, things are going to be dissolved in water. In fact, all those solutions I make, when, we, when you look on a bottle... Um, at the lab, and you see something like this, N-A-C-L, okay, oops, sorry about that, let me rewrite that, that's a little messy, computer's a little 
pull behind here. But if you see something like this where it says one molar NaCl, what that means is that's NaCl dissolved in water. So it's a solution of water. So that's an aqueous solution. Okay, another important thing is this thing right here, arrow, right? If you look back at the equation I wrote out, okay, here's an arrow. The way this, this reads is that hydrogen plus oxygen yields water. All right. Um, this thing right here is a double arrow, and it's really used for a, a situation called equilibrium, which we really don't get into too much this year. You can ask my APers about that, and I'm sure they'll have a few words about, about that one. Uh, another thing that happens is sometimes a reaction will be heated, so you'll see a triangle. I always write the triangle. I rarely write heat. Or every once in a while in a book when I see something, they'll actually put the temperature that they run the reaction at. And then the last thing for symbols is sometimes re reactions need a catalyst to run. And so you put the elements, PD right here, palladium, you put the element on top of the arrow. Or if you look at the demo that I did uh, the other day, which was called Old Foamy, I used a catalyst of NaI, which is sodium iodide. So I would write the symbol of that formula on top. So anytime you see an element or a, uh, it's usually an element, if you see a formula up there, that is a catalyst that helped run that reaction. So now that we have all these uh, symbols up here, and we know the rules uh, from this page over here, let's go ahead and practice writing some out. So here's our first reaction. Uh, methane is, and I gave you the formula because from our basic naming, nomenclature stuff, you guys don't necessarily know the name of that. So let's just write this out. Methane, I'm going to write CH4. Now notice it says it's a gas, so I'm going to put a G there. Plus, it says burns and reacts with oxygen. So what do I have to write? I have to write the formula for oxygen, which is O2, exactly. Okay, now oxygen's a gas, all right? And it makes water vapor, so I write the formula for water, H2O. It's a gas, that's what vapor is. And carbon dioxide gas, so the correct formula is carbon dioxide and then a gas. Okay. So you can see that satisfied everything from uh, that uh, word equation there. Right. Hopefully that makes sense, but don't worry, if it doesn't, we're just going gonna to do another one here. Okay. Let me just erase this real quick. Oops. Sorry about this. My computer's having a little bit of difficult time here. Okay, so let's do let's do another one. Alright. Okay, when using an iron catalyst, nitrogen from the air reacts with hydrogen gas to produce ammonia. Alright, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drive right nitrogen. Claude Fibre, huh, right? So it's N2. And nitrogen from the air is in the gas phase. Plus hydrogen gas, another one of the seven diatomic elements, H2, gas, okay? Using an iron catalyst. So I'm going to write the symbol for iron, which is Fe, to produce ammonia gas. And ammonia is NH3, and it's a gas. So there you go. Notice we're not worried about balancing equations right now. Okay, So it's a real straightforward procedure to write these out. Got to remember, always put the state of matter. Write the correct formulas. Make sure you get the things on the right side of the arrow. Now, I often get a question, does this matter? Which order I put these two in? It really doesn't. As long as they are on the correct side of the arrow, that's all that really matters. So what I want you to do right now, pause this video. I'm going to put up a question. I'll put up question three. And I want you to go ahead and write this out. Okay? Pause the video, write this out, and then I'll put it up. Do that now. Okay, hopefully you did that. Here is your reaction. Okay? Now, what's the tricky part of this? Well, look what they have at the start. Okay, they said sulfur dioxide gas. So immediately some of you might have started 
You might have wrote that as you were reacting. But again, look at the key word. It says produce. So that tells you it's a product. So sulfur dioxide gas goes over here. Okay. When solid calcium sulfide is heated. Okay. So I know calcium is plus 2. Sulfite is minus 2. So the formula is CaSO3. And it's a solid. Okay. Now it says it's heated. So I put a triangle over here. And then a fine powder. All right, powder is a solid, so calcium plus 2, oxygen minus 2, so the formula is CaO, and it's a powder, so it's a solid. All right, how'd you do on that one? Okay, if you didn't get it, that's okay. We've got another chance for you here. So what I want you to do next is I'm going to put another one of these up here for you. I want you to pause the video one more time. Try it all by yourself and see if you can get it. All right, so take a moment, pause the video, see if you can get this one. Do that now. All right, let's see how you did. Here's the formula, okay? Now, we're putting together a few uh, ions, and for those of you that are still struggling with finding uh, ways to, to put together ions, again, it's one. So we've got uh, over here, we've got, uh, you can see up here it says potassium carbonate is poured. All right, and it says solid, so here's potassium carbonate, solid, poured into a solution of hydrogen acetate. Okay, and this is better known as acetic acid, but, but we've just started getting into naming acids. And that's, here's AQ. A, A, AQ means it's dissolved in water. The key is right here, it says a solution. All solutions are aqueous. Then it says, um, Forming a solution of potassium acetate, potassium plus one, acetate minus one, aqueous again because it's a solution, and then carbon dioxide gas. Right. So I hope you did okay on these. Um, if you didn't, that's okay. Come and see me. We'll practice some more, and uh, hopefully you'll get it down. All right. And uh, see you in room seven or pardon me, one hundred eight if you need it.